over. Today we will see this asynchronous serial transfer. So in this asynchronous serial transfer here, uh, how we transmit the bits here? That's the point here. Because so far here in this case is what we have seen is how do we know? How do we know here in this uh, case? Uh, source initiated stroke. How do destination unit knows that the source unit is trying to communicate? So that is what the concern here. And with the help of this stroke signal, this destination unit will be uh, acknowledged that this source is trying to transmit something. That way, that is made uh, aware, this destination unit, with the help of this stroke. So at that time, this data bus, whatever, as long as this stroke is high, as long as this stroke is high, this data uh, that is there on the data bus is valid for the destination. That's how we managed in the stroke control. So the other way around, we managed in the handshaking. Some problems in stroke methods, that acknowledgement is not there. So we, we have gone for handshaking. Now, uh, there is a, another method called asynchronous serial transfer. So what is this asynchronous serial transfer? Before getting into this asynchronous serial transfer, going through this all these uh, points here listed, so let us go to uh, this one here, first uh, paint software. So here in this, suppose say we have something here, a source, and something here, a destination. In another case, uh, this is this is one, one scenario. OK, so the another case is the same again, one source and uh, one destination. So this is the uh, same, our source. Can you people able to see this? Yes, sir. OK. So here we have here a destination. So similarly, here also source and here our destination. Suppose say something here, there is a signal. Uh, let me take the signs here. So here is a clock signal that is coming here to the destination and also to the source. So this is called, let us say, this is our CLK clock signal. This CLK, since this is connected to source unit as well as the destination unit. Now, whatever that we transmit from source to destination, source to destination, or anything that you transmit from destination to source, both are synchronized to this clock. So we call such a uh, transmission as a syn synchronized synchronized transmission. So here, in this case, suppose say, if we have uh, something, uh, uh, suppose uh, say, uh, this is transmitting something here to the destination, in the second case. This is where we are talking about the second case. So we are something this source is transmitting to the destination. But this is operating at different clock. It is having its uh, uh, clock CLK one so and this is operating at a different clock let us say this is operating at a different clock this is say clk uh, two so this is clk two now since this clock is operating at different frequency let us say that is for example understanding 20 megahertz frequency is the clock and this is operating somewhere let us say for uh, understanding purpose 40 megahertz. So now these two clocks are operating at different speeds. The data that is coming here, the data that is coming here, <laughs> is not synchronized. To the uh, needs to be synchronized. Needs to be synchronized at the destination. Here no issues here. It is it, it is synchronized here because it, uh, they are operating uh, with the same clock here. PLK clock is same for the source, for the destination. 
so for every clock edge if this is your clock edge this is your clock edge and uh, these devices are operating at the positive edge then uh, you can very well uh, say that this is the positive edge 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 and the bit that is available here at this edge the bit that is available at this edge and the bit that is available at this edge the bit that is available at this edge so this edge bit is successfully uh, been transmitted from the source and successfully received at the destination because both are operating at, at the same clock the clock is same for the source and the for the destination but since the clock is different here this is a 20 megahertz and this is a 40 megahertz the, the clock here some something if this is uh, uh, if you see the uh, timing here if this is how we are plotting to represent and if this is uh, plotted if 40 means uh, 1 by t that's how you get the uh, you know f f so you get the t timing 1 by f so 1 by 40 and this is 1 by 20 so in one you are making 20 divisions and uh, in one you are making 40 divisions so this is comparatively less so meaning very close here so this is very 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 close so here this frequency i mean uh, are you getting are you getting what i'm trying hard here yes someone can acknowledge are you able to yes sir okay so since the clock frequency is different here, this edge is operating at different time and the edge here operating is at a different time timing here. This, is, this edge is different. So synchronization is something challenging here. So we have to able to still able to transmit in spite of having different clocks, we should able to still transmit uh, uh, contains from source to destination as well as we should be able to receive from destination to uh, source as well. So in this case, in this second case, this comes into the picture that is called asynchronous serial transfer. How we do this asynchronous? We earlier, uh, earlier this, this one, uh, this is called, this is called synchronous. This is called synchronous. This is called this, this sort of transmission where the uh, clocks are different here 20 and this is 40 for example clocks are different this uh, source unit is operating a different uh, clock and destination unit is operating a different clock so we say the, this sort of devices are asynchronous so is such asynchronous systems are there but still how do we transmit this data that's the point so this is one thing uh, before we get into this uh, discussion we have to understand this one and the other one that we have to understand is <laughs> this that uh, uh, this is suppose say you have the source and you have the destination this is your source this is your destination so if there are eight bits message is transmitted like eight bits for example, uh, 8 bits, I mean, uh, suppose say if there is a A, B, C, D, something like that. So A is converted to 8 bits, B is converted to 8 bits, everything like that. So <laughs> suppose say you have something, uh, this hello. So in this case also, H is converted to 8, E is converted to 8, L is converted to 8. Again, this L is 8 and this O is 8. So like that, uh, suppose say been converted. So this message... This message is with the so, uh, with the source unit. So, what are the ways that we can transmit this message from source unit to destination? One way is to transmit uh, this way. That is, uh, uh, transmit parallelly. Total eight here, uh, three, four, five, like that. Here we have to have total eight lines here. Here total lines are here. Total lines are eight. So uh, this is uh, oh, okay. Something like that. Uh, let us say these are eight lines. So the other way around is, if we have something like this. Oh, this is. Uh,
to this one and uh, the other one is here again this is uh, our source oh i'm messing up something oh, i have to pick this one this is source oh, sorry this one and the pen pen where is the pen ah, this is the source and this is the destination so the other way is single wire use the single wire so one bit at a time suppose say this one 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 zero one zero zero one total eight bits here so first transmit this bit over this line and then transmit the other line over this line and then transmit this line like that one after another so such a transmission is called serial transmission and this sort of transmission is called parallel transmission so we have parallel transmission mechanism and we have serial transmission mechanism so in spite of having parallel transmission mechanism in spite of having serial transmission mechanism still they could be synchronous earlier we have seen synchronous and asynchronous so synchronous uh, parallel transmission is possible synchronous uh, serial transmission is possible asynchronous parallel transmission is possible asynchronous serial transmission is possible so remember this, this these are the basic concepts so with these basic concepts let us go to this uh, discussion now you will understand in a better way this one so let me take this pointer here. Okay. <laughs> so the transfer of data between two units may be done in parallel or serial. This you have seen. Okay. So in the paint software, we have uh, demonstrated this. In parallel data transmission, each bit of the message has its own path, and the total message is transmitted at the same time. So this is at the same time means again, uh, I have to go back here. So here, in one shot here, in one shot, all these bits parallelly. This is, uh, for example, one here, one, one, zero, and then one, zero, zero, one. In one go, all these will be transmitted to the destination. But here, one after another, time consuming here. It's a time consuming. So that is what here we mean here, uh, this stage, saying that, uh, uh, saying that, in a parallel data transmission, each bit of the message has its own path and the total message is transmitted at the same time. This means that an n bit message must be transmitted through n separate conductor path. This is very obvious. If n bits are there, 8 bits are there, means we need 8 conductor, con uh, conducting paths. So n bits are there, means n separate conductor paths are required. In which case, in a parallel transmission case. In a serial data transmission, each bit in the message is sent in sequence one at a time. So this method requires the use of one pair of conductors or one conductor and a common ground. So this is about the common ground here. This is uh, having any issue with this. So we have here, uh, see, in a electrical transmission, all the time we have, this is the one is uh, for carrying, we say phase, and the other is uh, negative, that is ground. So here, this is, this transmission, what had been uh, shown here, this transmission, uh, that is, uh, where is here? Where is it? Okay. So here again, I have take a pen. This one, uh, pen after that. So this one line that I had to have, and this is let us say we are transmitting bits here on the positive line, and there should be a negative path also. That is ground. So somewhere here we had to have one ground, and here one ground when the destination is transmitting was the same line was the same line, it may come data from this side or the other side out. So this also will have one ground and this also will be having one ground. So that is, uh, this is uh, related to electrical. This concept is there, with one wire is not possible, we have to have two wires. So one is a positive, the other is a ground. So nothing to bother about that. So let us go back to our discussion. This is, that is what we are uh, talking about this one here. So, where it is, uh, this one. 
this method requires the use of one pair of conductors or one one pair one pair two meaning two two wires so on one conductor and a common group nothing but pair only this is one so parallel transmission is faster but requires many wires this also very evident you have seen parallel in one shot all bits will go uh, but several wires are required it is used for short distances and where speed is important so this is important this this is very important it is used in short distances and where speed is important serial transmission is slower but is less expensive since it requires only one pair of conductors so it, this is very uh, obvious if you have any doubts you can ask or you can unmute yourself and you can ask do you have any doubts you please unmute yourself because i have to again come out of the presentation go to the chat and see no no or yes yes or something like that so it is better if you unmute yourself and communicate uh can someone uh, acknowledge yes sir uh, is that clear so far yes sir okay thank you so let us continue so now serial transmission can be synchronous or asynchronous this also we have seen in the, the paint software it can be as uh, what is meant by synchronous what is meant by asynchronous uh, th that is also known to you people because in the paint already we have demonstrated in synchronous transmission the two units share a common clock frequency this is also known to you people and bits are transmitted continuously at the rate dictated by the clock pulses at the rate dictated by the uh, clock pulses means if 20 megahertz clock uh, meaning at that speed at 20 megahertz clock speed every bit will be transmitted uh, for example uh, if you go again here uh, Take this one. This is uh, yeah. say. And uh, you have, for example, 20 mega uh, hertz clock. So this is your F. So what is your uh, T then? T equal to 1 by F. So here what is really happening is 1 by 20 into that 10 power mega means 6 plus 6 so now this 1 by 2 is your point y is it not 1 by 2 is a point y this is 10 to the power of minus 7 so help me, uh, correct me if I'm doing any mistake here. So this is uh, something uh, 50 micro uh, seconds. How 50 microseconds? If you take this one, uh, that is 5 uh, divided by 10 uh, into 15 to 10 power minus 8, sir. Uh, this is 50 nanoseconds. In that case, 50 nanoseconds. So this 500 is... 500 nanoseconds. 500 nanoseconds. That's what? Uh, uh, 50 nanoseconds, no? 500, sir. Okay. 500, sir. Okay, okay, 50, okay. sir. 15, uh, uh, okay, we'll work out now. No issues. This is uh, very easy. This is uh, 5 into uh, 10 to the power of minus 8. So what we need here into 10 to the power of, uh, 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 multiply by 10 and divided by 10. So take this 50 with this uh, 5, that, that 10 with this 5, that is 50, and this uh, 10 to the power of minus 8 and this 10, that will become 10 to the power of minus 9, nothing but 50 nanoseconds. Is that clear to everyone? Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So it's the 15 nanoseconds. So meaning what? Every bit that we are transmitting here, this with this uh, edge is a 50 for, for every 50 nanoseconds. For every 50 nanoseconds, one bit is transmitted if we are working with this clock. If, uh, uh, when we, our frequency is 20 megahertz, then it means what? Every bit is transmitted 
for uh, 50 nanoseconds. For 50 nanoseconds, every uh, each bit is transmitted. The time taken by each bit is done. So now, if you come to here, somewhere we uh, we were talking about that. So it's the rate somewhere here. I think this is the on is in a where it was. Oh, this one. In a synchronous transmission, the two units share a common clock frequency and bits are transmitted continuously at the rate. Rate means that 50 nanosecond rate. So with respect to time, then we say rate. It's a uh, rate dictated by the clock pulse. Hope this is clear to everyone. In long distance, serial transmission, e each unit is driven by a separate clock of the same frequency. So for long distances, serial transmission is preferred. Earlier been said for shorter distances, for short distance, it is OK. This is the parallel transmission. And also for high speed communication, this parallel transmission is required. But when you come to the long distance, then serial transmission is required. And also where separate clocks are there, there also. So synchronization signals are transmitted periodically between two units to keep their clocks in step with each other. If, if we are transmitting using uh, synchronous, then two units will be working at the same clock. That is what this synchronization signals are transmitted periodically between two units to keep their clocks in step with each other. In asynchronous transmission, binary information is sent only when it is available and the line remains idle when there is no information to be transmitted. This is important. When line is, uh, very obviously, the transmission line, we're talking about this line. This is the line, this is the line. So you have one, one device here, the other device here, and there is a line. This line should be idle here. Then only the sensor, this source, the sensors, where the line is idle, or something is uh, uh, already been transmitted over the line. So if it is idle, then only uh, anything, uh, this source or destination will initiate for the transmission. So condition is this, this line should be idle. So that's what uh, this point is. So in asynchronous, that line should be idle. Otherwise, uh, transmission is not possible. This is uh, in contrast to synchronous transmission, where bits must be transmitted continuously to keep the clock frequency in both units uh, synchronized with each other. So, are there any doubts uh, in this in these points here? We have demonstrated already with the paint all this. Still, if you have, we read out also once. If you have any doubts, you can ask. If you don't have any doubts, you can unmute yourself. No doubts. If you say, then I proceed. No. Okay, thank you. We'll proceed. So, a serial asynchronous data transmission. So we have seen a serial may have asynchronous as well as synchronous. This we have demonstrated in the paint software. The serial asynchronous data transmission technique used in many interactive terminals employs special bits that are inserted at both ends of the character code. I was talking about this, that how these devices will know. In the paint software, I was telling here if you have the source, and if you have the destination here, how is that this destination unit is going to know in a synchronous case? In synchronous case means this source and this destination. These two are connected to the uh, same clock. So no issues with that. But if asynchronous, how this is managed that all bits are successfully reached? This is the starting bit of the message. And this is the end bit of the message. How is that each other knowing? If, if source is transmitting, how is that destination knows? If destination transmitting, how is that source will know that? So that is what this point is talking about. A serial asynchronous data transmission technique used in many interactive terminals employs special bits that are inserted at both ends of the character code. Character code is the actual message that we are intending to transmit. With this technique, each character consists of three parts. Each character code, each character code consists of three parts. One is the start bit, the character bits, the actual bits, these are the actual message bits, and the stop bit. 
the convention is that the transmitter rests at the one state any machine will be there suppose say your system is there it is there in the uh, uh, some state when you are not working when you start working it is coming into the, some other state if it is hanging suppose say you press long button uh, uh, that power button uh, for long time so at that time then what happens is uh, that may go to the re, uh, restart uh, state so this is the one state such a state restart like a state it is there in one state the convention is that the transmitter initially will be there at one state when no characters are transmitted the first bit called the start bit that is already said here the start bit the first bit is called start bit is always zero so in this example the first bit is always zero and is used to indicate the beginning of a character the last bit for stop bit is always a one so apart from this uh, character bits here this start bit is always zero and this stop bit is always one so we'll see uh, with example this so you have this uh, start bit here this is zero here you see zero here so this is a character these are the character bits one two three four Point six seven. In this example, total seven bits are the actual message bits. And then this is uh, this is also included. This is also part of the message. This this also. It means total eight bits. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight are the character bits. And then finally here here if you see, this is the stop bit. So in this bracket, you see at, le at least one bit. So the end bit need not be only one. It can be more than one, but at least one end bit as a logic height. That is, at least one bit should be there. So this is how uh, the you know uh, in a asynchronous serial transfer, uh, a destination unit will. Come to know that this is when it senses start bit as a zero, then it 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 thinks that after this zero, this zero it is not going to consider as a message. After this zero, whatever that comes, entire thing till eight bits needs to be treated as a message bit. After this, then the final one after eight bits passed. Then the ninth bit that comes, if it is one, then it treats like this message is completed, receiving is completed. So that's how this asynchronous serial transfer is uh, uh, working. Are there any doubts in this understanding here? This this one, this one. Sir, in the character bits, uh, sir, in the character bits, there is also one more. Sir, then it can stop. Uh... Uh, I will come to that. Uh, here, I will come to that. Uh, can you repeat one more time, sir? Yeah. In the character bits, uh, there is also one. Then it can sense that it is a stop bit. Yeah, that's good observation. Uh, any other? Are there any other? Okay. Uh, so let us quickly go there. Uh, who's paint here? So here. I have uh, this is this, this, uh, so let us uh, take here this one. Let us segment like this. So this is let us uh, a book here. One, two, three. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these eight are actually uh, comprises of our character code, actual bits. So before that, if there is any, so yeah, this is I am calling it as the initial. 
So initial if there is a, a zero and the last here and beta last bit. and if this is one so how is that this is going to work we check first if zero initial bit if zero followed by this zero we keep checking uh, till ninth bit let us call this is the ninth bit and this is zero so we check zeroth bit first zeroth bit this is zeroth bit is zeroth bit is equal to zero yes if yes then we start counting till eight bits after count reached eight ninth bit is is ninth bit is ninth bit equal to one we come we, we ensure if these two are met this one and is ninth bit one if these two are met um, met in between here what all the bits have you received you you keep them in a container so, say let us say a a is a container each bit is going and sitting inside the container and the capacity of this a is eight bits it can handle suppose so now what happens is whenever the source is trying to transmit, initially we check the first bit, zeroth bit. Zeroth bit is zero. Then after that, if one is also coming, any number of ones are are any zero, no issues with that. It is not going to assume anything. But the program is so designed that if first zeroth bit this is uh, uh, start uh, zeroth bit meaning the start bit initial bit initial bit or zeroth bit or the first bit is that zero this is the first comparison done after that it keeps counting till eight until it reaches not eight this this is not taken into account this this is not taken into account after that till eight what all bits they come maybe uh, one maybe zero whatever so all them are, uh, are 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 kept in a container and the container capacity should be eight bits it should be able to hold eight bits meaning eight flip-flops and when it reaches to the ninth ninth it should ensure that that is that that is one then the received this contains are meaningful if this is not happening let us say for example if this is the uh, starting bit itself is a one then very obviously this is not going to happen this this enter this center code is not going to happen are you getting are you getting yes sir okay 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 are there any uh, doubts uh, to others yes uh, some other can unmute and uh, can talk to me are there any doubts uh, as i said i do, don't want to go to this uh, meeting window there see the chat uh, box yes somebody tried to unmute and uh, yes are there any doubts no sir okay thank you so let us proceed with this so the and all this matter here that we already have seen this uh, four different after I was talking about asynchronous serial will be there, asynchronous serial, all this we have seen. That's why I just uh, skipped all this here. Only this portion uh, I, I took up for discussion. So I guess uh, uh, with this uh, you don't have any doubts. So if you have any doubts, you can ask. So as you people said, uh, acknowledge that no doubts. Let us proceed to the another topic that is. Uh, modes of transfer so before going to the modes of transfer let us go to the first slide in the first slide here we have covered this io interface we have covered asynchronous data transfer and we have covered uh, we are going to cover now modes of transfer okay so in this uh, here, in this asynchronous data transfer, 
how we actually uh, source and this destination will know what is uh, the meaningful data is so that is what we discussed in asynchronous uh, data uh, transfer in that so these are the ways one is uh, using stroke the other is hand shaking the other is uh, asynchronous uh, serial uh, tra uh, transfer so coming to this one here uh, this one modes of uh, transfer this is actually what are the different ways that memory and io can transfer data so what are the various ways so that is what all about the modes of transfer means here so uh, this modes of transfer is remember again what are the different ways that memory you might be knowing at this stage memory means we are actually meaning our internal uh, uh, system computer memory that is a ram ram or rom that that one, semiconductor memory and io so this io uh, uh, at this stage you must be knowing anything that is plugged into the system so your keyboard your uh, hard disk your pen drive your uh, usb camera all these are io devices so how they actually communicate to each other so how they transfer the data among themselves is the modes of transfer so there are basically three means or methods modes one is programmed io the other is interrupt initiated io the other is direct memory access so let us see first modes of transfer introduction so binary information received from an external device is usually stored in memory for later processing so we 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 give some some information to the uh, uh, computer so through text editor or uh, uh, whatever so that one we store inside the memory for later processing so uh, that is again let me go back here so possibly i may i may open here some 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 text here and possibly i may write uh, some uh, like a uh, uh, print uh, something uh, in a python if directly i can write a print uh, hello something like that okay or uh, then y plus uh, six something like that so now at this point at this uh, time i i did write this one but again i am also storing suppose say, for example i am storing it so these two things are happening at this instant of time i open this and i wrote something and without losing them i also store them and i am preserving inside the computer for later processing so that later processing could be anything but that's how i am doing it so that's what here so binary information received from external device you have seen that information print hello everything is a binary that is being received from external device that is why uh, laptop uh, keyboard is usually stored in memory for later processing so information transferred from central computer into an external device originates in memory unit this is again uh, the same example central uh, computer meaning your uh, actual cpu it can transfer the uh, uh, you know contents from where it can uh, transfer from the memory unit so suppose say i have this again uh, i i have some pen drive so i just want to take this contents again i just want to uh, uh, transfer this one to send to to my external pen drive so uh, this is happening so this is happening means where it is there actually where, where these contents are there these contents are there you know where where these contents are there these contents are there inside the memory so that is again uh, information transfer from central computer into external device or originates in the memory unit the cpu merely executes io instructions and may accept data temporarily but the ultimate source or destination is the memory unit so that data that is there inside now is of no use for the cpu cpu is not going to process all the time 5 plus 4 cpu is not going to process all the time print hello world or something like that all the time so it is there, stored preserved in the memory unit whenever required 
CPU, what it can do? It simply can do that. It helps us to send that data to some I/O devices, such as if I am plugging in my uh, pen drive. So it's, it, it 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 simply has to execute I/O instruction. That's it. It is not going to do with that data anything. So that is one thing. So data transfer between the central computer and the I/O devices may be handled in a variety of modes. Some modes use the CPU as an intermediate path. Others transfer data directly to and from memory unit. So this is important to understand. So without the need of the CPU, we also can access that data. CPU is not required actually to read from the memory or to uh, write to the memory. We can bypass the CPU. CPU is job merely to compute anything. If you want to uh, process something, suppose you are processing speech, it's a program and that needs to be processed, meaning uh, that the voice uh, noise needs to be removed. It's an algorithm. So at that time, CPU will play. If you are writing a multiplication algorithm, at that time, CPU will play the role. But for transmission uh, between uh, you know in, in internal memory to the pen drive or pen drive to the memory. At that time, CPU really not computing anything. That point we have to understand. It's not computing anything. So uh, what we can do is the role of CPU we can eliminate totally, and we can ensure that CPU is actually doing computational job alone, and I/O devices are directly talking to the memory, and memory is directly transmitting to the I/O devices. What is the advantage by doing so? By doing so, the advantage is that. Important computational job we can assign to the CPU. Non-important jobs such as transmitting anything to the uh, I/O devices or taking anything from the I/O devices and storing inside the memory for later processing. Such activities can be done by some other means. By doing so, the advantage is that the CPU can be we can engage it to compute some some essential job. So that's a uh, point that we are trying to understand in this mode of transfer. So the data transfer to and from peripherals, to peripherals or from peripherals, data transfer may be handled in one of three possible modes: programmed I/O, interrupt initiated I/O, direct memory access. So this topic I will con 